Hello, friends. I'm Pastor Pitts Evans. Welcome to the Whole Word Podcast. Let's get right to the Word of God. Friends, there is a long internal prefix in Psalm 102 that does not include the typical direction for the musical application of the psalm. You know, it doesn't name the tune that was popular in that day that is to be performed to. It does not name the author. But it does tell us the specific occasion or purpose that this psalm was written. The prefix says this, A prayer of an afflicted person who has grown weak and pours out a lament before the Lord. And so this, um, this prayer, this Psalm 102, 28 verses, contains a lot of suffering and requests for relief from suffering. So in that respect, it's pretty straightforward. It's a prayer for the afflicted. But since the time of the Holocaust, people have been pointing to parts of this psalm, and they've said that um, the words could easily have been said by those uh, Jews who were in the concentration camps where they were massacred and um, many things occurred. So I'll read the psalm straight through, see if you can pick out some of the wording that sounds like... um, someone enduring the Holocaust might have might have spoken, that there might have been, the Holy Spirit might have led the psalmist some 3,000 years ago to pen words related to the Holocaust. More about that as we talk about the psalm itself, but listen now to Psalm 102. A prayer of an afflicted person who has grown weak and pours out a lament before the Lord. Hear my prayer, Lord, Let my cry for help come to you. Do not hide your face from me when I'm in distress. Turn your ear to me when I call. Answer me quickly. For my days vanish like smoke. My bones burn like glowing embers. My heart is blighted and withered like grass. I forget to eat my food. In my distress I groan aloud and am reduced to skin and bones. I am like a desert owl, like an owl among the ruins. I lie awake. I have become like a bird alone on a roof. All day long my enemies taunt me. Those who rail against me use my name as a curse. For I eat ashes as my food and mingle my drink with tears because of your great wrath. For you have taken me up and thrown me aside. My days are like the evening shadow. I wither away like grass. But you, Lord, sit enthroned forever. Your renown endures through all generations. You will arise, and you will have compassion on Zion, for it is time to show favor to her. The appointed time has come, for her stones are dear to your servants. Her very dust moves them to pity. The nations will fear the name of the Lord. All the kings of the earth will revere your glory, for the Lord will rebuild Zion and appear in his glory. He will respond to the prayer of the destitute. He will not despise their plea. Let this be written for a future generation, that a people not yet created may praise the Lord. The Lord looked down from his sanctuary on high, from heaven he viewed the earth, to hear the groans of the prisoners and release those condemned to death. So the name of the Lord will be declared in Zion, and his praise in Jerusalem, when the peoples and the kingdoms assemble to worship the Lord. In the course of my life, he broke my strength. He cut short my days. So I said, Do not take me away, my God. In the midst of my days, your years go on through all generations. In the beginning, you laid the foundations of the earth, And the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you will remain. They will all wear out like a garment. Like clothing, you will change them, and they will be discarded. But you remain the same, and your years will never end. The children of your servants will live in your presence. Their descendants will be established before you. So I don't know if you caught the references I was referring to. But let's go through it again, and I'll, I'll point out um, 
uh, the general prayers for affliction, someone going through difficulty, sickness, or whatever, and then um, those things that some have applied to the Holocaust and Holocaust victims. It begins this way, verse 1, a prayer of an afflicted person, already mentioned the prefix. Hear my prayer, Lord, let my cry for help come to you. Do not hide your face from me when I'm in distress. Turn your ear to me when I call. Answer me quickly. And so those those words, hear my prayer, uh, don't hide your face, turn your ear toward me, all of these things have been said before in various psalms. But then it starts to get interesting with this prophetic interpretation about the Holocaust in view from verse 3 onward. This is verse 3. For my days vanish like smoke, my bones burn like glowing embers. And so metaphor, our days are quickly passed, they vanish like smoke. But in the Holocaust, there were ovens that literally uh, burned the bodies of Jews and uh, burned their bones. This says, my bones burn like glowing embers. So possibly um, uh, you can see the prophetic inference to that. Then in verse 4, we read, My heart is blighted and withered like grass. I forget to eat my food. Now, some have pointed out that this um, forgetting to eat food or, or lack of hunger is an advanced state of starvation. Once again, you may recall seeing pictures of Holocaust victims uh, that were just literally skin and bones. They, were, they had been starved. Many of them starved completely to death. But this, this psalm says, I forget to eat my food. And apparently in advance um, starvation, you lose your appetite. It goes on in verse 5, in my distress, I groan aloud and I'm reduced to skin and bones. Now, of course, this could be said of a lot of sickness. But uh, once again, if you viewed any photographs of people from the Holocaust, from the concentration camps, this um, being reduced to skin and bones was a common feature. Verse 6, I am like a desert owl, like an owl among the ruins. And um, those Holocaust photos I alluded to often show dark circles under the eyes. And these are observations others have made. They're not original with me. But uh, this verse 6 twice references like an owl, um, like an owl among the ruins. Verse 7, I lie awake. I have become like a bird alone on a roof. And uh, just as loss of appetite is um, an advanced symptom of starvation, so is um, insomnia. I lie awake um, has been referenced in that context as well. And then verse 8, all day long my enemies taunt me. Those who rail against me use my name as a curse. And you may recall, friends, that in the concentration camp, uh, the, the Nazis railed against the Jews and they used the word Jew as a curse. Uh, just as the psalmist um, says in verse 8. Verse 9 is particularly interesting because of a, a movie that was made some years ago called Schindler's List. And in Schindler's List, which I've never seen, I'm told that there's a scene where the residents of a particular concentration camp are in the yard, the out, outside of the buildings, and the ovens are burning Holocaust victims and the ashes from the Holocaust victims are floating through the air and settling on the food of the still living victims who are eating. And this says in verse 9, For I eat ashes as my food and mingle my drink, my drink with tears. And so this, um, uh, this image in Schindler's List, once again, I didn't see it, but I'm told that this scene closely resembles what's prophesied in this verse 9. Verse 11, my days are like the evening shadow. I wither like grass, speaking of um, uh, shortened lives. And then there's a faith decree in verse 12. We have a bit of a transition. It says, but you, Lord, sit enthroned forever. Your renown endures through all generations. You will arise and have compassion on Zion. For it is time to show favor to her. The appointed time has come. For her stones are dear to your servants. Her very dust move them to pity. So once again, this um, could be a, a call for the Lord to remember Israel in general. And in the day that it was penned, that's probably what was intended. But those who interpret this as a Holocaust prophecy 
point to the, the, the time to have compassion on Zion that's spoken of in verse 13 as the reestablishment of Israel that occurred after World War II. Many scholars and, and uh, many religious Jews believe that the outrage over the treatment of the Jews during World War II allowed for Israel to be reestablished as a homeland for Jewish people to have a place of safety. So this one again, you will arise and have compassion on Zion, for it's time to show favor to her, for the appointed time has come. Uh, Viewing this in that context, that could have been easily a prophecy saying that when all these horrible things happen to the Jewish people, Israel will once again be reestablished. It goes on in verse 15 in a similar vein. The nations will fear the name of the Lord. All the kings of the earth will revere your glory, for the Lord will rebuild Zion and appear in his glory. He will respond to the prayer of the destitute. He will not despise their pleas. And then verse 18 says, Let this be written for a future generation, so that a people not yet born may praise the Lord. Now, friends, if this is indeed a prophecy, it was not intended for the generation in which it was written. And this verse seems to say specifically that these words were penned for a generation that was not yet born. And so, um, continuing verse 19, the Lord looked down from his sanctuary on high, from heaven he viewed the earth, to hear the groans of the prisoners and release those condemned to death. You know, and ultimately the the war was um, victorious against the Nazis. The concentration camps were opened, the prisoners were released, and the Lord heard these prisoners um, both 3,000 years ago in the days of the psalmist, and of course he heard the the cries of the prisoners in the in the Holocaust, and um, they may well be alluded to. Finally, in verse 25 and following, there's a prophecy that in the New Testament is recorded as a messianic prophecy. It's it's spoken of about Jesus in in the Psalm verse 25. It reads this way. In the beginning, you laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you will remain. They will all wear out like a garment. Like clothing, you will change them, and they will be discarded. But you remain the same, and your years will never end. That is quoted exactly in Hebrews uh, chapter 1. In verse 1, it says, The sun says... And then it says several things. Then verse 10, it picks up this psalm. In the beginning, Lord, you laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you will remain. They'll all wear out like a garment. You will roll them up like a robe, like a garment. They will be changed. But you will remain the same, and your years will never end. And then it closes, finally, friends, this psalm with um, a look towards uh, this better day that's coming. It says, The children of your servants will live in your presence. Their descendants will be established before you. So, Father God, um, we just bring you this psalm, and I submit my inadequacy to correctly interpret it. Lord, um, it's clear that part of it is Messianic prophecy because it's recorded that way in the New Testament in Hebrews chapter 1, that Jesus laid the foundations of the earth, that the heavens are the work of his hands, Um, that everything in the created order will perish, but he will not perish. This is all clearly penned about Jesus. But these other words that seem to be applicable to prisoners and those who are suffering conditions similar to the Holocaust, it's difficult to know with any certainty if that's what was in view. But Lord, we pray for the families of those who went through the Holocaust. We pray for those few survivors who are still living at this late date, but for their descendants. Lord, may nothing like this ever happen again to your Jewish people. Lord, we thank you that indeed Zion has been rebuilt, and it's appearing once again in the Middle East in the form of Israel. Lord, turn their hearts toward you. Turn the prayers that have been offered up for a safe country for the Jewish people. Turn those into a place that's redemptive for your purposes. Lord, listen to the groans of the children of the prisoners of the Holocaust. Awaken, O God, establish Zion, not just as a nation preeminent among nations, but as a spiritual homeland for your son Jesus once again. Lord, bring yourself fully 
to the Jewish people and reveal your great Son. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Whole Word. It was brought to you by Whole Word Fellowship and the Northern Virginia House of Prayer. If you were encouraged, please share our podcast with your friends. We'd also appreciate it if you'd hit subscribe in your favorite podcast app and take a few moments to write a review. If you'd like more information on our church and our ministry, you can go to wholeword.net or wholewordpodcast.com for more information. Thank you again, and may the Lord Jesus bless you today and always.